The Humbile Core, 2A, Genetics, Evolution, and Ecology, 2B, Culture, Evolution, and Society. The Fall Humbile Core takes an evolutionary perspective on the origin of human beings and the development of societies at the same time as it provides an introduction to genetics and ecology. In his first lecture, Professor Durham asks why, if most adults cannot absorb lactose, would humans in dairying cultures have evolved this capacity, unique among mammals? The genetic mutation for digesting lactose has occurred at least three separate times, and may have been conserved in populations for different reasons as well, as an alternate source of calories, calcium, and vitamin D. This module on milk models the human biology program's uniquely interdisciplinary approach to the human being. Durham goes on to introduce general concepts of evolutionary theory, natural and sexual selection, adaptation, and speciation, whereas Professor Klein focuses on our peculiar branch of the tree of life. Bipedal hominids evolved in Africa and migrated into Eurasia in waves so that when Cro-Magnons moved north, others were already there. What difference accounts for our survival and the fate of Neanderthals? Now that the ancient DNA of Neanderthals has been sequenced, what evidence is there of our ancestors interbreeding with them? Klein examines the archaeological evidence to answer these and other questions about human evolution. Human population growth is one of the most pressing issues of our time. Dr. Preston introduces fundamental ecological models of population growth and its limits, while Professor Scheidel explores theories in social science that relate population size to inequality and innovation. Students learn about predation, mutualism, and parasitism from an ecological perspective alongside population genetics and Mendel's laws alongside DNA replication and recombination. These concepts provide a framework for understanding the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium for the allele for sickle cell anemia, a congenital disease which persists in populations because it increases the chance of surviving malaria, particularly among young children. At each hierarchical level, from our molecular biology up through the societies in which we live, human beings evince complex organization, raising complicated questions. What role did grandmothers play among hunter-gatherers to promote greater longevity? Did language enable populations to cooperate beyond the scale of the extended family? How did marriage customs mitigate inbreeding? How has infectious disease shaped human history? How will humans be affected by declining global biodiversity? How directly do our genes affect our health and well-being? 3A, Cell and Developmental Biology, 3B, Behavior, Health, and Development. During the winter, students learn how biology and behavior interact, from cellular processes through human development. Professor Fuller introduces cell biology, protein structure and function, nutrition, energy transport, and membrane trafficking. At the same time, Professor Anne Fernald introduces critical periods of infant development, from lactation through early cognitive development. A baby's health depends as much upon the development of the cytoskeleton that enables cell signaling as it does on the language environment and the socioeconomic status of the family. Professor Lyons discusses biological predictors of both adolescent risk-taking behavior and resilience to post-traumatic stress disorder. Breakthroughs in epigenetics have also demonstrated how gene expression is primed or inhibited by early malnutrition and other environmental factors, increasing our vulnerability to heart disease, diabetes, and stress. In one module, Professor Nuss introduces the students to the behavioral and environmental factors that impact the immune system. In another, he focuses on the role stem cells play in tissue repair, while Lyons focuses on the interactions between adult stem cells and mental health. The quarter ends with an examination of the aging process, particularly in the brain. The elderly are vulnerable to dementia and cancer as a result of cellular processes caused by genetic mutation and cytotoxins, but also because of environmental factors human societies have created themselves. Although the brain and the body break down naturally, Dr. Karstensen emphasizes how healthy behaviors like exercise and social community can offset and delay the aging process. 4a, the human organism, 4b, environmental and health policy analysis.
In the spring quarter, Professors Fisher and Heller demonstrate many ways that the nervous system flexibly adapts from the level of the neuron up through the sensory and motor control systems. Globalization and climate change are also forcing societies to adapt quickly, and Baker and Nation ask students to confront some of the most important policy decisions of our time, about the value of life and the right to die, global warming and externalities that threaten both the global economy and the environment. One module, for example, connects the physiology of respiration and air pollution. Another focuses on our neuroendocrinal and reproductive systems, and at once outlines trends leading to overpopulation, which may amplify threats to our planet. A major goal of the human biology program is to base health policy on the best science, and the spring quarter culminates in a detailed study of the political and economic bases of our healthcare system. Students are encouraged to think critically about inequities, health disparities, information asymmetries, the efficiency of market solutions, and, with the increasing cost of care, to reevaluate our current strategies for paying down these costs through mandates, exchanges, and health insurance. As part of the writing in the major requirement, students form groups to write policy proposals and are encouraged to publish them. At the end of the quarter, they present their projects to the rest of the class.